So here we are, at long last, the NSI wind has arrived at mobile computer for review. This is the third Intel Atom powered netbook we've seen so far. The first was the Asus EPC901, followed by the Acer Aspire 1. But this is the netbook we've really been waiting for. The, the, the quick look we had at it um, a few weeks ago, uh, it seemed to combine all of the best features of the, the other cheap ultra portables we've seen this year and last. Um, so yeah, let, let's take a closer look at it. Like the Acer Aspire 1, it makes a, a very strong first impression. It, it looks to be very well made. It has that nice glossy finish to the lid. NSI has uh, dumped their rather brash circular embossed logo, um, thankfully. This is a much more discreet and stylish logo on the lid. Glossy finish is complemented by a, a slightly matte underside. Again, it's you know it's a cosmetic, small cosmetic touch, but it uh, it does give you a nice quality feel. The lid has that slight curve to it with sloped edges to reduce the uh, the visual appearance of its thickness. It's still a relatively thick laptop, but. Um, from certain angles, it certainly looks to be nice and slim. Now this is bigger than the EPC 900 and 901, which I'll compare it with in a moment. Um, it's about the same size as the Acer Spy 1, perhaps a little bit wider, and again I'll compare it with that as well in a moment. But uh, that means MSI has got a, a couple of advantages with that extra case width. First is the screen. This has a 10-inch screen. The other netbooks have 8.9-inch screens. It's only 1.1 inches bigger across the diagonal, but um, every extra bit of space counts when screens are so small. The other notable feature, of course, is the keyboard. And again, that width means that MSI can pack in a, a much larger keyboard than on the Asus EPC. I'll compare it again with the Acer Aspire in a moment, but on this first look it seems to be about the same size keyboard as on the Aspire 1. A couple of notable differences though. Really nice to see a, a full-size enter key. We haven't seen a netbook with a full-size enter key so far. And again, while typing you can easily get used to a, a small key. It's nice to have the the real thing on there with a full size backspace key too. Well the keys are of a, of a good size, the, uh, the cursor keys a little bit smaller than on a normal laptop but that's, that's no big deal. Good size spacebar and, uh, and shift keys. I'll, I'll give more details when I write the review, full review later but uh, as a sign of first impression the keyboard seems to be rather nice. Touchpad looks a little bit small, but um, again, I don't suppose that will be a problem in use. Just a single button with the left and right clicks at either side. Row of status lights down the side here. Um, power key at the, the top right. I've read some, uh, some complaints online about the hinge mechanism on the, on the wind. Um, seems fine to me and um, certainly seems stiff enough to hold the screen in whatever position you'd want to hold it in. Doesn't The screen doesn't go all the way back and even in that position the laptop isn't particularly well balanced but then I don't think anyone's really going to be typing with the screen tilted so far back. It uh, doesn't seem to be an issue with the screen at a, a more normal angle but again I'll investigate that a little bit further when I'm writing the review. In terms of ports, USB, SD card, audio, VGA and Ethernet on the right hand side there, nothing on the back. On the left hand side, another pair of USB ports, power and a Kensington lock, lock slot. Uh, big air vent on that side as well and, uh, and lots of cooling vents on the underside. The Atom-powered netbooks that we've seen so far haven't been running particularly hot. 
So I'm not quite sure why there's this need for so much cooling. I'm not sure if the wind has active cooling or not at this stage. I suspect it does probably have a small fan inside. If not, that would explain the need for so many vents. But again, I'll report on that in the review. Stereo speakers at the underside there, one on each side, pointing onto the desk. So uh, I think we can probably guess how loud they're going to be. Not very. But um, like I said, for a first impression, pretty good for the MSI wind. Looks to be well made, fairly stylish, still in that relatively sweet spot in terms of size so that it's still relatively portable but uh, big enough to get a, a good sized keyboard and screen in there. Uh, if we compare it to the Asus EPC 901 you can see that from a quick glance they don't look to be that much different in size but if I put one on top of the other you'll see that the, the wind is 30 mil or so wider. Um, I suspect there's probably not too much difference in, in thickness. Um, if anything, the wind is actually a little slimmer than the, the Asus, but uh, they're about the same depth and the wind is a little deeper. If we compare the, the keyboards, you'll see what a, what a huge difference there is between the two, despite the only slight difference in, in width. So you can see the, the wind's keys are nice and large. And if you can make out the black keys on this EPC 901, you'll see they're quite a bit smaller. And we have that little end key, little backspace key that I mentioned. If we bring the Acer Aspire 1 into the picture, we'll see the three netbooks that are currently available with Intel Atom processors. Again, the Aspire one is fractionally slimmer than the the wind. I'd say ooh, 15 mil maybe. A little bit shallower, and I suspect they're probably about the same height. If I can just juggle all of these laptops around, yeah, very little between it. Now, it'd be interesting to see the keyboards side by side. I, I guessed that they were going to be pretty much the same size, but we'll, we'll find out. Um, yeah, it's difficult to, to see without actually grabbing a ruler and measuring, but I would say the keys are pretty much the same size on both laptops, and I hope you can make it out with the, uh, the Aspire 1 having a black keyboard. But again, the Aspire 1 has a, a single height enter key and a, and a shrunken backspace key just reiterate because it's such a nice touch for the full size enter key and the, the large backspace key on the wind and um, so zoom out a little bit you can see you can see those two side by side very little in, in, in it size wise with those two but you can see that the the wind's bigger screen doesn't really add much to the size of the lid you probably can't make out you can just make out the screen on the on the Acer Aspire 1. And then if I bring the EPC 901 into the picture, if I can fit them all onto the table, we can see all three side by side. If you want a, an idea of the uh, increasing size of these Intel Atom powered netbooks, and I'll do a, a slow pan across all three so you can compare them. So there we have it, that's the MSI Wind, if it, uh, that's your kind of thing, there's an unboxing video to watch uh, if you find that sort of thing interesting, um, but I'll be working on a review later today and we should hopefully have something on the mobile computer website late today or first thing tomorrow morning.